everyone. Welcome to week seven of English 3010. We are officially more than halfway through with our semester, so congratulations. Um, I'm very proud of all of you for sticking with the course, um, especially during this crazy time that we're having. Um, you should all feel very proud of yourselves for the work that you've done. Um, and you should also enjoy the fact that we are now more than halfway done. <laughs> um, so keep that, um, that positive note in mind as we continue um, throughout the next coming weeks, okay? Let's see, what is my, I apologize, my, I recorded, I've recorded this video many times now and my microphone keeps glitching, so I have to keep redoing it. <laughs> um, so I do apologize if my brain is a little scattered at this point because I have said the same thing many times. <laughs> um, all right, so here's what we're going to be doing today in this video. Um, I want to talk about some reminders for the course, just talk about some due dates. Um, I want to go over the literature review one more time. I know that last week we did some readings about literature reviews. We also turned in our reading response and our journal. So for the most part, you seem to have a very good understanding of what literature reviews are, but I want to just have a very quick overview refresher um, to make sure we're all on the same page. And then finally, I want to talk about synthesis, because in reading your journals, it seems like synthesis is the one thing that most people are worried about when they are approaching a project three. So we'll talk about what synthesis is, like what does that word even mean? Why do we keep throwing it around? Um, how to do it? Um, and I will provide some resources for you for that, okay? So that's what we're doing today. Here are some reminders. Don't forget to please come to office hours at least once this semester. Um, it's worth 50 points. So it's really easy to help boost your grade or to also help really harm your grade. Um, we can talk about anything that you like. We can talk about your draft. We can talk about um, an assignment that you don't understand. We can talk about um, any readings. We can talk about the state of the world right now. We can. Uh, you can bitch about your chemistry class, um, whatever will be most helpful for you. I just want to have that one-on-one -on -one time to check in with all of you and make sure that you're doing okay in this course, okay? And then lastly, here are our due dates for the week. Um, surprisingly, in the journal responses, pretty much everybody said that they wanted to do a, a draft for the project, which is awesome because that means you guys understand the importance of drafts, um, so good job. Um, but, so we are going to turn a draft in on Friday for Project 3. I will have a video uploaded to Canvas um, a little bit later today on Monday um, that talks you through that, so stay tuned for that so you have um, more information. And then, as usual, you have your weekly writing due on Sunday, okay? Um, lastly, if you have not turned in Project 2 for any reason, please, please, please either submit it or contact me. Um, you really do not want to have a zero for not turning in one of the major projects. Um, it is imperative that you turn it in. So please um, email me. We can set something up. We can work on it. Um, we can talk through the struggles you're having, see what's going on. But please don't just ignore me, um, ignore my emails, not submit anything, okay? All right, so let's move into our brief lecture on literature reviews. So I think for the most part, you all have a very good understanding of what literature reviews are. I was very pleased reading your journals and your reading responses. Um, but this is a good chance to just kind of go over again um, what a literature review does and its functions and purposes. So a literature review is a snapshot of the current research on your topic. So what's important here is that it's a snapshot. You are not ever in any literature review you ever write are going to be able to encompass all of the literature that has been said on your topic. Um, you should be taking the sources that are most relevant to your topic and your question, the sources that you think most effectively pass the craft test, um, the sources that are most interesting to you, um, etc. Right? You should not attempt to include every single source that you've ever come across on antibiotic resistance. Right? It's not feasible, possible, um, or even really useful. You want to select the sources that are best for your topic. Okay? Secondly, and super importantly, your sources should be peer-reviewed. 
So this means that they should be scholarly. Um, this says research papers, but you can obviously use books for this project too if you um, if you have any, but you want to make sure that they're peer reviewed. You don't want to be using sources like Teen Vogue or Huffington Post or something like that. You want to use um, the databases on Wayne State's library website. There are plenty of resources throughout our course, um, our Canvas website, that you can find these things, but you can also talk to me one-on-one uh, -on -one if you are struggling or you need a refresher on scholarly and peer-reviewed work. I'm more than happy to do that because it's a really important component of literature reviews and this class as a whole, okay? Thirdly, a literature review establishes relationships between texts and authors. So it's not a summary in that you're not just going to say, here's author A, here's author B, here's author C. Um, instead, you want to organize, which we will talk about in a moment, organize your literature review um, by theme, um, or perhaps even chronologically, there's a few ways that you could organize it. But you don't just want to summarize what authors have said. You want to put these sources in conversation with each other, okay? And then finally, um, the literature review should help develop a context for research. So by setting up your um, literature review, you are effectively creating a foundation for your own research to enter that conversation. So we're not quite doing that in this paper um, because I've split the literature review um, and the proposal into two separate projects. Um, however, that's traditionally what literature reviews will be doing, right? You start off your paper with a literature review, you um, set the stage, the foundation for your topic, and then you can insert your own scholarly argument and your own, own voice into that, okay? Okay, so one thing that I wanted to mention super briefly um, is this kind of terminology that seems to trip students up sometimes. So I've had students in the past ask me if a literature review is just like an annotated bib. So maybe you're familiar with what an annotated bibliography is, maybe you're not. Both of those are perfectly fine. Um, but if you are kind of hung up on this, I wanted to just make this distinction. So an annotated bibliography is essentially just a list of the sources that you're going to use in a paper. And then after each citation, you're going to summarize the points of the article, um, talk about how that research is useful for your own project. You might also mention some of the weaknesses or downfalls you see in the, in the article or the argument, okay? So that is what an annotated bibliography is. However, a literature review is not that. So they are similar in many aspects, but a literature review is an essay that covers the major findings of a field, how they relate to or are dissimilar from other findings, and major methodological and informational problems in the research. So you can see how these two things are similar in some ways, but they are not the same thing. So for project three, you will be working on creating an essay that again, as this says, that covers the major findings of a field. Um, field might be perhaps too broad in this case, you're looking more at a question or a topic. Um, but it's not just a list of sources, okay? So that's important to keep that in mind as we start to work on this project. Okay, so types of literature reviews, I don't like this word types, I'm not sure why I used it, I'm sorry. Uh, but essentially, literature reviews in articles or books that you might encounter um, are usually fairly long. They are going to have probably dozens of cited sources um, and they're organized by theme. Certainly you are not gonna have dozens of sources in your project three. Um, instead, you'll be producing a shorter literature review that is going to have eight sources. So sometimes they can be organized by author, but organizing them based off of theme is um, a much better and more effective approach. So we'll talk about how to kind of do that. So again, I don't know why I even have this slide, I'm sorry. Um, more complex and academic literature reviews are organized by theme with the research synthesized together to discuss the theme. So the good news is that in project two, you already started to do this, right? You found five sources and you looked um, at similarities and differences between them. And then you made a key that you color coded and you said, look, everything that's in red is talking about um, I don't know, this type of fairy tale. Everything that's in blue is talking about this type of fairy tale. Um, 
And you can then take your project too and look at the themes that you organize and use those as a basis for your literature review. Maybe you found that those, um, the way that you organized it weren't, wasn't effective and that's fine and you want to organize it differently, but at the very least you have a basis with which to start organizing, okay? Here's an example of how, um, of what a literature review looks like in a very uh, microscopic way. Um, you can see that some of the things that Bazerman talks about in his article are used here. Um, we don't have any direct quotations, it looks like, um, but we have different kinds of referencing. So this is a good example of that article, and you might want to go back and refresh your memory on that when you actually start writing um, your project three. Okay. So synthesis, what is synthesis? Um, synthesis, in my opinion, is one of those words that a lot of instructors um, throw around like, I don't know, crazy. Um, we say that you should synthesize things, that we need to um, work on synthesis, et cetera. Um, but we don't ever really talk about like what that means. Uh, kind of is one of those fancy words that we kind of know what it means. We're like, yeah, I think I know. I think it's talking about like summary, but what does the word itself actually mean? So typically in class, we'll have a, lo a lovely, nice, long discussion about this word. Um, because we can't do that, I put here a link to this video that I think would be really helpful for you all to watch. Um, I believe it's less than three minutes, so it's really easy. It's not too traumatic or anything, uh, but it talks about what synthesis is. So an easy way of explaining it, um, but please watch the video, um, is just that synthesis is putting, um, in the case of a literature review, putting sources into conversation with each other, right? It is establishing relationships between things. So the example I think this video gives, which is really nice because it takes it out of the academic conversation, um, is that if you have an understanding of, I don't know, let's see, one of my favorite shows on television, Schitt's Creek, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Um, but if you have watched Schitt's Creek and you have an understanding of it and you believe X, Y, and Z about it, and then you read an article where you find out something crazy about the one of the main actors and you are trying to figure out how this new knowledge, um, what's the word I'm looking for, how this new knowledge um, responds to or engages with the knowledge that you already have, right? And you need to kind of figure out how to synthesize these two things together. How do they uh, interact? How do they agree? How do they disagree? Does it make sense? Um, maybe this one article that you read isn't true, right? Or maybe you need to change your perception of, a, of the show. Um, I think that is a good way of thinking about it because we do synthesize things all the time, right? We're constantly bombarded with different, um, different sides, different pieces of information, and you have to figure out how those sources or those pieces of information, how do they go together? How do these two things make sense? Um, do they agree? Do they disagree? Um, do they mostly agree? But um, what are they doing? Okay, Does, I hope that makes sense. So here's this lovely little graph that talks about the differences between synthesis and summary, because a lot of times students think like, oh yeah, synthesis, it's just like summarizing something, right? Um, yes, but. <laughs> so synthesis does involve summary, but it is not just summary. So summary, as we can see here, is a brief description of one source's main ideas. Synthesis, however, is an extended explanation of ideas, trends, themes, theories, and or methods among multiple sources. So you are combining multiple sources to tell the detailed story of your topic. So it's looking at how things interact with each other um, and how they are adding to the conversation surrounding your topic. So as you can see here, synthesis is used in a literature review, which is what you're, you're, you're going to be producing. Summary is what you're doing in an annotated bibliography. So this is just another example of how those two things differ and what you'll be working on in this class, which is a literature review. Um, here is a great example of, maybe great is not the best word, but here is an example of synthesis. Um, as Strahl, 
as Strondelas argued, sharing specific details about the change will help to eliminate any difficulties. Steele Johnson et al. echoed these sentiments when they reported that revealing all of the details about a change process can help those involved better understand and support the change. Um, this author continues, and they actually include a third author down here, as we can see. Um, but this is a really nice example because some of the methods that Bazerman talked about or the other examples that I've shown you are complex, um, kind of more advanced techniques of synthesizing sources. This is a really simple way. It's not super fancy. Uh, as you improve as a writer, as you improve on your techniques of synthesizing and writing, um, you may feel more comfortable using those kind of fancier, more fun ways of synthesizing or writing. Um, but this is a great example of just putting sources into conversation with each other. It's not super fancy. It's not, um, it's not scary even, right? We have one sentence that introduces what this author says, and then we have another sentence that expands upon that by putting them into conversation, okay? So if you are unsure of how to synthesize, how to start my lit review, this is a really good um, example of how you can begin to do this, okay? Um, I wanted to provide this video link if you are still struggling with what a literature review is, why I'm asking you to do this project, why it matters. Um, this is a great um, source that just talks about what a literature review is and isn't. So if you are still struggling with that, please watch this video. Um, it should help you. But I think for the most part, everyone is, seems to be doing really well based off of your journals. So yay. <laughs> The last thing that I want to talk about is something that is not useful at the moment um, with the pandemic. Oh, I'm trying to move my thing, but I still think that it's important. So a lot of times students will find a source, not even students, a lot of times we all will find a source that we really want and it's not available at Wayne State for whatever reason. Um, however, maybe it's available at Grand Valley. What you can do is you can use interlibrary loans or MELCAT to access that source. So there are links to this on the Wayne State website and I'm more than happy to talk you through it if um, anyone would like. Normally I do a fun demonstration in class, but um, because we can't really use this right now with the pandemic, I, I don't wanna waste time going into it too much. But essentially interlibrary loans are an awesome way for you to get sources that are at other institutions around the state and around the country. So what they would do is if there is a book that you've requested that is available at um, Grand Valley, they will send it to the library that you've selected to pick it up at, and you will have access to that source for, usually it's like a month, um, and then you return it to the same library that you picked it up at, and then they ship it back. So it's a free resource. It's really, really awesome. It's a great way to get sources that are not available to you at Wayne. Um, again, with the pandemic, I think that a lot of these services are not being offered, but I think that it's important so that you still are aware that this is an option because I think a lot of students don't know that this is something that they can use to find sources um, instead of being like, oh man, I wish we could I wish we had that at Wayne. Um, this is a way that you can get things that are not at Wayne. So it's really important. It's really cool. Ask me if you have questions about it. I'm more than happy to talk about it. Um, but definitely be aware of that, okay? Um, so that is all I have for you guys today. Um, don't forget that your draft is going to be due on Friday. I will have the video about that posted later today. And you also will have your journal due on Sunday. I look forward to reading your responses and seeing your draft, seeing how the literature review is going. Um, I know it can be a daunting project, but hopefully the draft takes some pressure off. Um, I'm excited for all of your topics. You have really a really diverse and interesting array of topics. So I think that's really exciting um, for me to read. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.